Um, hi everyone, my name is uh, Sayani, so you can go to this uh, website and find uh, out my contacts. Uh, I also happen to do a little side project of mine, which is called We Build SG. So how many of you are at a developer meetup in Singapore for the first time? Awesome! So do you want to find out more? Not you, Justin. Yes. Alright, so if you are looking for any programming language, whether it's hardware, software, what we do here is we query even bright API, meetup.com API, Facebook API, ICS URL, every hour it runs a cron job, and all the free developer meetup, engineering meetups are here. All beginners are welcome, all advanced people are welcome. Even if you're not a developer, you're welcome. So everybody's welcome, we're all a friendly community. Come and join us, uh, including everyone. And here, the open source uh, is listed, so if you have put your location as Singapore, contain Singapore, not match Singapore. And uh, we have a GitHub repository of more than 50 stars. Updated within the last three months, your GitHub repository will appear here. So go and add Singapore to your location in GitHub. And uh, yeah, and uh, you see this mic uh, here, taking photos, uh, not sorry, videos of uh, meetups. And uh, we also aggregate the meetups from engineers.sg, so thanks to people like Mike. Okay, so that's a little bit about the developer community in Singapore. So I'm here to talk about... <laughs> I'm here to talk about Git for Teams, but this will not really be a talk. It will be a discussion because it's for Teams. So how many of you currently use other version control systems other than Git? What do you use? Airpoise. Sorry? Oh, Pofos, okay. TFS. TFS subversion. Is this the right meetup to ask this question? <laughs> yes. 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 Who uses only Git? Awesome. I want to hear who are the other. Oh, you want to hear? Okay, so what are the other? Monkey Shell. SBN? Ducks, ducks, any ducks? <laughs> ducks. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the old ones? Okay, great. So um, Git is a distributed version control system. So we're going to be talking about teams. It can be either internal team within your company, or it can be open source. So let's talk about the first one, uh, branching. So how many of you have a branch, like a, do you have a feature branch? Do you always branch out when you work on a feature? How many of you do that? Or you just work on master branch? All right, great. And uh, do you have a branch called like fix or something when you have a hot fix? All right, some of you and maybe a release branch. So how many of you use uh, this branching model called Git flow? All right, so some of you use it. So there was a blog post probably a few years ago, like in 2010 or 29 uh, by this Dutch guy. And he came up with this branching model called Git flow. I will release the slides later so they can uh, click it. And uh, he basically talked about um, this pattern. So master branch is always deployable. So you see they are tagged. And you always work on develop a branch. And uh, you work, uh, then you branch up in feature. And eventually you merge it to master, then are tagged. And uh, in uh, GitHub, or if you kind of uh, search in Google, Git flow is actually a framework. So maybe I can uh, show you guys in. Uh, so let's say I CD here, and uh, you can actually do git flow in it. <coughs> and then you can set up all these things. And guess what? If you list out all the git branch, you'll see there's a master and the develop. So you'll always be in a develop. And then you can start with like git, I have some uh, autocomplete git flow feature start. And then maybe you say git meetup. And uh, right now, you will see that there are three branches. So things like git checkout branch, uh, git uh, go to this branch and release it, uh, they will all do it here. So I suggest if you have not checked out git flow, you can check it out. It's, it can come useful for uh, teams. And uh, in open source world, uh, how many of you have heard of the git hub flow? A few of you? All right, so how is it different? The GitHub flow works in the GitHub model. So instead of uh, creating a uh, develop branch and then the feature branch, you basically clone a repository 
and then you send a pull request. You work, you work on a branch, and then you send a pull request. So the master is like this, and all you do is kind of really short circles back to the master. So they say this is much simpler. And I believe a lot of the open source developers use this model. And you can also do that. So if you want to send a patch, you use the GitHub flow. So once again, they do have a guide here by GitHub itself for the GitHub flow. Uh, a lot of people also do this within the company with private repositories as well. So basically, you're never added as an organizer or a collaborator. You always have a copy yourself, and you keep pull requesting to the main repository. OK, so this is something I heard just a few days ago, actually. It's called git pair. How many of you do pair programming? Awesome. Any of you use git pair? You do, yeah. In fact, in fact, the developer who told me had uh, uh, been trained by uh, Pivotal Labs or Neo, where uh, Michael comes from. So git pair actually allows you to set up, uh, if I'm not wrong, Michael, you can feel free to contact me. Uh, you can actually set up uh, both developers, uh, uh, yeah, you can actually set up both developers' uh, identities, and then it allows you to work together, git pair commit and git pair release and so on and so forth. So I believe uh, in terms of branching model, uh, check out git flow, github flow, git pair. All right. So is there anybody else who just works on the master and if something goes wrong, you just reset or something? All right, it happens as well, I'm sure. OK, great. Um, next is uh, a little bit about keeping your repository in sync with the main one. So the first thing I'll do is usually just git pull and make sure it's in sync. And the other thing I do is uh, syncing up fork, especially for open source once again. I fork it and then I work again, make sure you kind of git fetch upstream uh, to uh, make sure that it is in sync with the real repository. How many of you use other methods to keep yourself in sync? I do want to hear more. Git pull, that's all. <coughs> CJ, do you have any brilliant? Brilliant? Yeah, brilliant ideas. No. Like, Google is bad? No, no. <laughs> Are there anything else I'm missing? So no. Yes. Someone probably uses the Mac client. It just hits the sync button. Yeah, Mac client. That's a good one. Um, probably I should talk about it. That's a little... So how many of you work and get in command line? Wow. <laughs> how many of you use GUI? Yeah, GUI. And I would love to hear about the different types of GUI. Oh, what GUI do you use? Uh, the Mac client, the Mac GitHub. GitHub client. Gitbox. Gitbox. Uh, Git for Linux. Source tree. Source tree. There's one more. I used uh, once upon a time Git Tower. Anybody else? So, all right. So these are the few. I think the few major clients. So whether it's a, uh, maybe I'm biased. Learn the command line first, and then use the GUI so that you actually know the commands behind it. Okay. So number three, Git log. Uh, this basically shows you the git log. Uh, once again, if you are using a GUI, most of them will already show you the git branching thing. But um, uh, how many of you use git x? Uh, I also use git x, so that's another GUI. But git log itself, it's a command. And uh, maybe let me show you uh, maybe the rebuild. Uh, J rebuild. This is my alias, git log, and it's just gl. And you can see that I have a decorate, date, relative, format, and yada yada. So you can format it uh, in the way you want. And let me show you the rebuild sg git log. So it looks a bit like this. So you can prettify it if you want. So it can work on command line as well. And if you search in Stack Overflow, you have many pretty git log aliases that you can add to your bash profile or your shell profile. Great. Next is git commit. And this is where I would love to hear from all of you. How many of you commit often and commit fast? Commit often, commit fast, yeah? So any little changes is committed. And then you're on a fresh uh, stage. Um, how many of you tend to commit after a while, like after an entire feature is done? <coughs> is that challenging? Uh, it has to be fast. Yeah, I agree with you. Fast, yeah. Hinting, linting, build tools, everything has to pass. Um, commit messages, especially if you're working in a team, I believe it's a good practice to have a consistent commit message pattern. Uh, before I say two of my favorite, uh, does anybody have uh, some commit message patterns that you use in your team? 
None? Okay. So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna talk about the first one. I found this in Angular JS contributing guideline, and I really like it. So what they do is they actually start with a word and a colon to kind of indicate what type of commit this is. Is it a feature? Is it a bug? Is it refactor? And uh, <clears throat> you can also find here they scope it and then they put the subject. Also in the subject, I find that they always say that start with a present tense verb, like add blah, 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 or remove blah, blah, blah. Uh, and you kind of keep it consistent. The reason why AngularJS does it is to automatically generate change log. And I found this pretty cool, you know, like your git commit message becomes a change log itself and you don't have to work manually to create a change log. So this is one of the favorite ones I use. And the second one is by Atom Editor. Oh, I love this one. You know why? You know, if you include this colon and uh, the emoji thing and colon and then this, it comes up as an emoji in GitHub. This is only for GitHub. By the way, don't confuse GitHub and Git. This is a GitHub feature, not a Git feature, but I love it. So, um, so there are tons of emojis here. Um, if you ask around, uh, I, I think I have a bad reputation for emojis and stickers. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> so if you look at the we build uh, commits. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> Nice, right? really? so Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, why don't you use the Unicode one? Then it shows up in your terminal as well. <coughs> oh, oh, that's true. Unicode. You have to remember all your Unicodes. <laughs> that is true. Emojis here, right? Okay, anyway, choose the one with your team. The point is be consistent, okay? And uh, use emojis or emoji cons or whatever. I think it kind of spices up and gives a little bit of light. Uh, to your project. So this is the way um, I tend to do uh, git commits messages. All right, next one. So let's say you go to your feature branch, you commit, 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 commit. And then you merge it back to master. How many of you practice squashing all the commits? Squashing the commits, right? How many of you don't practice it? Like, like consciously don't practice it? Uh, and there are interesting uh, points on both sides of the story, and I think uh, it's just important to... So, Celia, why don't you squash it? I love history. You love history, yeah. That is basically uh, a reason, because they want to see every single thing. But what if you're testing things out, CJ? You know, like, back and forth. It's a bit ugly, right? It depends on the size of the group. Usually, if you're working with a very, very large team, like 10 to 20,000 developers, yeah. 10 to 1 to 10, 10, 20,000? Yes. Okay. 10 to 20,000 developers. Okay, it's a huge you, company. You will want to squash your commits because oh, yeah. uh, a lot of time they don't really care about the... When you make a commit, you have one commit, new feature, new feature. Yeah. Then afterwards, another 10 commits of bug fix, bug fix, bug fix, bug fix, bug fix, right? Uh, yeah. Usually that's the case. Yeah. So when all this bug fixes, you can squash it and you just pretend that you never made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, when you look bad at your commit history, it's a lot neater. It's a lot neater, yes. Yeah, <clears throat> when you squash. So once again, uh, choose a method. There's no right. Yes. There's one more thing. Another, another good thing about that is you do not keep any history and you keep your repository small, uh, file size small uh, when you're dealing with very, very large. Uh, file size small? Why? So Dot git. So, for example, Facebook's Git yeah. is about what, 15 gigs. I think and so. And whenever you're running Git status, it takes about one or two minutes to run. Wow. So it's not so nice. Okay. Point taken. So the point is uh, discuss with your team, stick to a convention that suits your project, and go with it. All right. Any other tips from anyone about Git commit messages or commits? All right. Cool. Next one, merge or rebase? I think it's a big debate. How many of you love to merge? Let's have more debates. Merge or, okay, merge in the merge camp. All right, in the rebase camp. All right, another question, why? Why merge camp? Maybe I should ask somebody. Claudio, why, why? No, what? I just recently switched to my oh, Okay, like, great. So, so why did you switch from what to what? Uh, because I read somewhere I should, I should switch from merge to rebase, so I'm checking it out. Oh, you're just checking it out. Okay, yeah. that's a great thing as well. I mean, just experiment and see what it does. But why, why merge and not rebase? 
And your screen looks awesome. Feels awesome, why? The tree looks awesome when you but view it in the when you view the tree later on, it looks awesome. For merch? Yeah. So because you, really, it really shows you did something. Yeah, it looks like you did something. So. <laughs> looks like you did something. Okay. <laughs> because rebase will basically destroy all your everything, yeah. right? It puts a mask there. Okay, great. Why rebase? Can I have one answer? Why do you love rebase yeah. instead of merge? Easier to trace. Easier to trace. Okay, cool. Um, the other question is when you have yes. Uh, so it's a very good topic. Yeah. Which potentially will merge or rebase will be a new topic in the upcoming meetup. Uh, it, it's a very very in depth discussion about it. So okay, cool. We, have a we shall draw circles and arrows and yeah. have a debate about it then. <laughs> Alright, great. No, but I agree with you. I mean, it is a uh, constant and people should know why they choose one over the other. Uh, so the next one is, um, I'm sure we have all had merge conflicts, right? So I want to know from all of you, what are the different methods you have used to uh, merge and have a clean uh, commit? Uh, how many of you use a GUI? Alright, what do you use, Sahil? Uh, I use uh, OpenDiv. OpenDiv, okay. P4 merge. P4 merge. KDIF, yeah, I have used KDIF once. Does Emacs count? Emacs, um, but Emacs is ma still considered manual, right? Uh, uh, no, it's a. Uh, oh, they come with a plugin, is it? There's this thing called S merge mode, which S highlights <coughs> for you the different sections, and then okay. you can lift each individual section. Okay. All right. Since you have talked about Emacs, come on, Vim, where are you? Give me. <laughs> yes. Um, I use Splice Vim. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Cool. Um, or if it, you can also do it manually, of course, you know, they come with, what are those called? Is there a word for it? Merge conflict markers. Carrots. Merge conflict markers. They're called carrots. Great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so merge, remiss, merge conflict, uh, choose your tool once again. Alright, the next thing is hooks. How many of you use Git hooks? So, uh, for those of you who are wondering, Git hooks are kind of uh, shell scripts that lie within .git slash hooks folder. And uh, I would love to hear from you what are the, some of the git hooks you use. I used to do pre-commit hooks and I used to run my test until my test went over 200, 300, 400. I was like, I cannot run my entire test suite every time I do that. And just a couple of weeks ago, I changed it to pre-push. And it runs the test just to ensure that before I push, all my tests pass, but I would love to hear from you what are other git commit hooks you use and for what purpose? Okay. Sorry? Um, uh, um, it's for syntax checking Python files to make sure. Well, that's hinting, version. right? Yeah. Linting. Hinting. Hinting, linting, and you use it for pre uh, commit. Pre commit. That's pretty cool because if you do just hinting, linting, it will probably take a lot lesser time than yeah. running the test. So you pre commit and then you do hinting and linting. Okay. What? Uh, yes, I have. So I have this problem that in my unit test, you can run only one or two unit tests if you want to exclude the other, right? Okay. And I have this bad habit of committing that. So when uh -huh. I push it, only one unit test runs on the build server. Right. So now I have a pre-commit book that checks that I have an excluded test and that I'm running everything. That's that's a pretty. So it's like skipping skipping some tests, right? And you do that. Um, yeah. So it just goes through all the files, make sure I haven't written described but only or it dot only anyway. So this is in your pre commit commit hook, yeah. right? And you have just a bash like grep yeah, yeah, or something, just, just, just a grep yeah. and then skip. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I think I'm going to use that. Thanks, Ahil, because I have done that before. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So any other? Yes. Deployment. Pre deployment. So what could uh, could you use? So you would have a build server which has a post receive tool. <coughs> post receive, okay. Which will pick up jobs and you will do something afterwards. Interesting. It's very similar to how GitHub have their web books. Ah. That's okay. post receive tool. Post receive tool. Okay, cool. I learned something too. Anybody else? In Debian, we also have post receive hooks to announce uh, things of the, the IRC channels. Ah, that's pretty cool. So you can hook to Hubbard, you can hook to Slack. Yeah, all the chat ideas now come, right? Like, uh, and mailing lists. And mailing lists, that's right. Um, awesome. So any of you do deployments with Git commit hooks? Yeah? Well, which, which hook do you use? Uh, maybe. Same. Same. Okay, cool. So Git hooks are very powerful. If you haven't used it with your team, have a discussion and use it. I have one last question for any of you. So the thing is that uh, this Pre-commit hooks actually are not part of the 
Git repository, right? So where do you write them down? Is it in the readme file? I write them down in my readme file. I have them in another Git repo. Oh, so that's like common for all the projects, I guess. Uh, yeah. Actually, um, in the case of Debian, the, there's a script called setup repository uh, for every new package that we do. Interesting. So you call the script with your, with your repository name and it just puts all the hooks there for you. Interesting. So have a common repository for all your uh, projects? Uh, it's not a common repository, it's like one repo. Okay, okay, one repo per package. It's okay. just all in the same direction. We keep it in a scripts folder. So we have a shell script. Okay. A shell script, we just we the install hooks. Mm -hmm. Basically, we just dump the latest okay. git commit. Uh, pre, -commit pre commit hook. Pre commit or post commit or whatever. Okay, so you either have a separ separate repository or you put it in a scripts folder. <laughs> Once again, whatever you do, decide with your team and be consistent. Uh, next one, git tag. Semantic versioning. How many of you follow that? <laughs> you can you explain what's git tag? Git tag, OK. Um, so basically, your commit, right? You can have another attribute called tag, and you can give it a number, and you can also have a message. So git tags are typically the way I and my team use is um, Every push to the production is tagged. Uh, so it's basically kind of a marker. Yeah. So uh, semantic versioning. By the way, um, should I really mention it? Our git. Um, <laughs> so should I just say it? Our our first slide uh, did not follow semantic versioning. It was 0.1.0. .0. So semantic versioning 2.0 is 1.0.0. So for those of you, uh, how many of you have heard of Git semantic versioning? All right, so for the rest of you, uh, semantic versioning means uh, you have three digits. So something, point, something, point, something. Uh, the first one is a major API change, which means backward incompatible. Maybe I should show you the, <coughs> come on. Uh, okay, Semvar. Yes. So uh, the first digit um, means it is a major API change, which is backward incompatible. The second digit means um, backward compatible. It's a feature. And the last one are security or patches. So yeah, usually the way I do tagging is uh, following semantic versioning. So it kind of tells people that, hey, if I bumped up the middle number, it means I have a new feature, but it is backward compatible. Uh, and the way I create, uh, like I said, uh, the way I use git tag is that every push to the production has a tag. And uh, this is how, not, not always uh, my version, but I will kind of say what the tag does. So how all of you use git tag, or do you use git tag? Is there any other way you use git tag, other than uh, kind of marking production deployments? Branches. You use Git tag for branches. No, no, no. I use branches as version. Branches as version. That's interesting. So you don't use Git tag. I, I do, but I'm saying that you can use branches, branches as, as. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Is there any other way you use Git tag? With All right. Minus s. Sorry. With dash s. What is dash s? I don't know that. GPG key sign. Ooh. Capital yeah. s. It's not dash s. <laughs> no, oh, it's small. Is it? I think it's S. Really? No, capital S is for Okay. <laughs> All right, git tag dash S. Uh, we'll check it out. And uh, the last one, uh, git bling. Uh, somebody told me um, you should probably alias it to git praise instead of git bling. <laughs> you said that? <laughs> Okay, CJ said that you should say you should alias it to Git Praise because they are, after all, your team members. Okay, so for um, all of you out there, I don't think I've ever used Git Blame seriously except for open source repositories, not to see who has done it, but to see when was the last change. But uh, I would probably uh, take this uh, chance to ask uh, all of you: Were there any, were there any horror stories um, from which we can learn something? Anybody wants to share? Yes. Not exactly a horror story. Sure. Uh, so, like, I use it basically like a book, um, when I work on the board of piece of snippet. Like, I don't know why it has a one point, it doesn't make sense. So I just blame it, I see the, um, like, 
commit message, like the, in which commit has been done, I just read the whole commit. Like it helps to browse up to what was the context for which this code was. Interesting. Okay, cool. Any other stories for Git blame or just working with Git and your team? Sometimes Git blame is good for finding out context, like how, yeah, who, exactly. like whoever wrote that code, um, why he wrote that. How many months ago? Yeah, um, may not be as far back as okay. that, but it's like a very recent change okay. that, oh, this, this is a breaking change in the game. So, what was the reason behind it? Mm -hmm. and why it was not discovered in the Test and stuff. Okay. So it's a good way to look for any test on forensics to find out why. Yeah. Uh, so actually, when you do testing and you will have a lot of mocking, mm -hmm. you create a lot of mocks and stuffs and yeah. which are contracts, which will you can change the contract and something break, you can find out why. It yeah. could be a good reason behind it. Like, say, um, some deserialization doesn't work somewhere else. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, Claudio. Uh, maybe as a question to everyone. Yeah. Uh, especially to you. Um, if I mean now that we with Git blame, for example, we have um, so much metadata about the code available. Do you think that makes uh, comments sometimes a bit less necessary? Because what you just said, when you, when you want to know why it was this breaking change introduced, the traditional idea would be there should be a comment in the code uh -huh. saying this is why we did it. If you have to use Git blame, I mean, maybe that's that's the intention that we have. Don't comment such things like ideas. I think in agile you you value communication yeah. more, so you face to face communication rather than writing contracts and saying you you didn't do this right. So you rather talk to the person and find out why. But sometimes the description may not be detailed, right? Okay. Yes, Joshua. Because, uh, another way to use blame when you have like a father who wrote code at the start and then. You know, they kind of like hands up and, and, and so it becomes a game like well, it's, in, it's the father's code still in the code base. Oh, that's interesting. And see whether it's new, it's new, it's new. That's very interesting. <laughs> uh, I think last week it was Microsoft's 40 years, right? And Paul Allen, uh, I think he did something like that, right? He went back to the very first comment of the Windows and showed Bill Gates and him writing that code. So it's pretty interesting to see founder's code. Cool. So it's like going back to history. The starting of the code base. Great. Uh, anything else you want to share about Git and Teams? Or did I miss anything pertinent? Yes? Um, I've done similar, but I've done Bicep. Uh, Bicep? Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, that's awesome. That we're all um, and so, going back to your point on squashing history, yes. so I was working on a really large project with like 10 or 20 developers, and so we, we all squash our commits to like two or three. Um, and then we did a bisect and there was an issue because we couldn't figure out what it was and we squashed it. <laughs> okay. And so like it came, um, that's like one downside to squashing your commits, I guess. Right. Um, because when you want, like when there are issues down the road, especially on bigger projects, mm -hmm. like you don't know where exactly the code fails. So sometimes continuous integration doesn't pick up yep. on like issues that fail, like a test that fails or whatever. So. Fantastic. Right. Anybody? Any last comments about uh, Git and working with teams? How many of your teams prefer other than Git? Oops. Or is this a perfectly valid question? No, it's a perfectly valid question. Perfectly valid question. Any of your teams prefer not Git? <laughs> All right, Aishel. Yes. Uh, comment messages. Then yes. you can actually tie it up with a issue tracking system. So if you have uh, comment messages like you use filter tracker and you tie it up with filter tracker, you can just put a square bracket mm -hmm. for hash followed yep. by the story number. Yep. You actually add a comment to filter tracker. If prepended like finishes or delivers, you actually change the status of that yep. uh, story. In Same with GitHub tracker. issues. Yes. Yeah. GitHub issues. So learn those uh, and append stuff to your comment message, and it will be automatically uh, right. closed. Right. Yeah, that, that's a fantastic tip. Yes. So on the on the subject of GitHub issues yes. and using something like Pivotal Tracker, yes. there are like third party GUIs that try and make the GitHub yes, issues they do. look more like Pivotal Tracker yes. story lengths. Yes. Um, what do you what are your opinion recommend? Um, well, I I prefer Git issue GitHub issues by itself. Uh, I think it's based on your preference, but this is a good point. Um, there is something called. 
Kanban or something like that, right? Kanban works on, so Waffle I.O. Yeah, Waffle I.O., exactly. Waffle I.O. Uh, that hooks onto GitHub issues. Uh, the other day you showed me Zen Hub. Yeah, Zen, Zen Hub. Dot, uh, and it kind of arranges into like Trello boards. Zenhub.com. Uh, Zenhub.io. Zenhub.io. Yeah. You use Jira, that's Green Hopper. Yeah, Jira. So. Pivotal. Big Bucket is Jira, right? Uh, Atlassian. 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 <laughs> evaluated with your team, I guess. But yeah, that's a fantastic, uh, it's basically the project management side of things. Okay, great. Any other tips, tricks? All right, if not, uh, thank you very much for sharing your ideas and discussions.